Okay, the gentleman from District 32. Mr. Speaker, I shan't take long. It's been said, and I think repeated here a little bit, uh, this is paraphrasing an old story that I heard a long time ago, but if all of the members of this body uh, who have drifted off to sleep during this debate were placed end to end, they'd probably be a little more comfortable. <laughs> we're told today that this is a choice between two bad alternatives. And I display a little thing here on my desk that I'm not <coughs> going to hold up and violate the rules doing so, but, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just remind uh, us all, Mr. Speaker, that there's no right way to do the wrong thing. And Mr. Speaker, I have to say that I think this is the wrong thing, and there's not a right way to do it. I have asked the question repeatedly since the beginning of this whole discussion. Why does Idaho need an exchange, period? Not what kind of an exchange do we need, but why do we need an exchange? I have yet to receive an answer to that. And I don't want to hear the answer that says, well, we've got to do this or the federal government will do that. I'm not interested in that kind of a deal. I just want to know why. Why is that an exchange a good idea? for the citizens of this state. Mr. Speaker, I've asked myself some other questions. What does an exchange look like? And how much is this ultimately going to cost our citizens? Now, I'm not talking about the construction of it. I'm talking about the ongoing expenses. And Mr. Speaker, I'd just like to quote my father-in-law in that regard because it, I think it's apropos. And the answer to the question is, no man knows and very few women. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, my dad was a risk taker, as you and I are. And as a result of that, he was never afraid to go borrow money. But it gave him great pause one day when he went to a lender and the lender stepped out of the room and he read this, this little sign on his desk. It said, For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that beholdeth begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. My dad told me he almost got up and walked out of the room without asking whether he could borrow money. Mr. Speaker, I really think at this point of the day that we could determine the outcome of this piece of legislation if we just get a chance to vote. I'll be, I'll be voting no when I get the chance. <laughs>